And has, not surprisingly, shaken many New Yorkers who rely on the nation's largest subway system to get around. The head of the MTA says his agency is listening. N.J. Burkett went underground with Jano Lieber today for a long ride and a long chat. I mean, I think some people would have looked at the situation that happened the other day and said, okay, well, the next day, you're going to have a big dip in ridership. So what did you see in the system? There was definitely a dip in ridership the last two days. It was, it was, it was 100, maybe 200,000 on the subway. That's definitely, some of that is attributable to people's reaction to that horrific incident. Thank God they caught this maniac. Um, but, you know, what you also see is, you know, especially in the outer boroughs, People, you know, are, are doing this partly because they're New Yorkers and they don't back down, partly because they don't have any choice. We have to keep the subway system and the whole mass transit system working and getting better because there are a lot of people who don't have alternatives, who can't afford an Uber, who have to show up at work, who can't sit at their desk in their, in their living room and tap away remotely. That is, you know, that's our obligation. We want to rebuild all of the ridership and rebuild people's confidence, but our, our first obligation is maintain a good system for a lot of people for whom this is their only lifeline to make sure they can support their families. Obviously, there's never a good time for something like that to happen. No kidding. But you've had a series of incidents, and this is being seen by many as just the worst incident of a number of bad incidents, and it's being seen in a context. Listen, there's nothing, you know, we had a series of things where, you know, are very high visibility uh, incidents with our customers. There's no question that are concerning. There's nothing quite like what happened on Tuesday morning. A mass shooting is different, and I expect people to react differently. We are reacting differently. I am saying to the city, I need to see cops on the platform. I need to see cops on the train. I need to see people start intervening and opening backpacks when they set up a table, as we all know that the cops do. We want them to actually stop people, open backpacks. You know, this fellow, you know, had a lot of material with him. So we really do want to have a more aggressive deployment by my friends in the NYPD. The mayor has been great. He has been very clear that that's what he wants. I want to give you a chance to answer a question that, that a lot of our viewers have been, have been asking, a lot of people in the city have been asking, and that is there's been so much done with police presence and security in the system, yet this happened in spite of all of these efforts that were made to prevent this kind of incident. What would you say to people about why it wasn't prevented? You know, I, I prevented, really, that, that is, that's what we're, you know, first of all, we have to recognize that if you live in an open society, there is risk. All of us accept a lot of risk. When we walk out the door, unfortunately, there are all kinds of risks that we encounter. The particular problem is that when people get into the subway, they're in a closed environment. They don't feel as, as, as free, and that is, that is scary. However, what I would say is the history of being on the subway and the history of using the subway, it's counterintuitive because we feel like we're closed in, but the history is that it's actually a safer place to be than above ground in the city. Now, that, it may not feel that way, but it's true. I cannot gainsay what happened yesterday. That is a terrible thing, and there's no way to make, you know, to, to, to minimize it. There's just no way. You have to deal with the fact that a maniac came into what the, the sacred public space that we all share that makes New York possible, and he attacked it. And it's, you know, the, what they're trying to do, what people like that are trying to do is they're going to scare people away from living their lives and doing the things that make New York possible. I don't think New Yorkers are going to give up. I think New Yorkers understand that, you know, that that there will be additional efforts made. But in the meantime, we have to live our lives. And part of the richness of New York is that you can get anywhere to do all kinds of things. You can get, and for 275, and you don't have to own an automobile. For so many people, that is one of the few things that makes New York affordable, not having to own an automobile. The subway is magic that way. And we have to recognize that we're gonna commit to make it safer and better. But right now, we're all in mourning for those people who suffered what they did. Final question for you on this. Um, you know, some people have raised questions about the cameras within, within those three stations, yeah. that they were vital cameras to the investigation. I, I know that you have uh, uh, an opinion on that. 
Um, can you explain to me what your perspective is on it? Look, you, you, you don't. You never want something not to work, especially when it's you know it's it's a tool for solving, addressing a, a crime situation. The reality is we have increased the number of of cameras in the system from like 3,000 to almost 10,000 in a few short years. The goal is to have as many cameras in the system so you catch a lot of different perspectives um, because some might be down at any time. All of us who have lived in the, you know, in the world during the pandemic have found out about, you know, Teams and WebEx and, um, and Zoom. It doesn't always work, right? The internet connection sometimes fails. That's what happened in those two, uh, in those couple stations. However, we had so much video that we were working with the NYPD through the night and we actually got images as have been shown on your station again and again of the guy coming into the system straight on images and we also got images of him elsewhere in the system apparently after he committed the crime so you're saying materially you don't believe it affected the investigation listen I, it, it, honestly what you, what you have to do is you look at everything that's available and in this case there was a lot of there was a lot of video available and the police use all of it